Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. God bless everyone who just joined in. Nice to have you with us. Jesus is Lord and Islam is false. Thank you for joining in, guys. Nice to have you with us. Now, yesterday, guys, we showed everyone that Muhammad was nothing but a fake prophet. And we showed you that he broke all the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses by God himself. He broke the Ten Commandments of our holy living God. So can you be a true prophet if you break the commandments, the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses? Can you call yourself a prophet? And have a cake and eat it too, while at the same time breaking the very important Ten Commandments. We started with commandment number one, and we showed you that Muhammad actually worshipped a totally different God. Because God of the Quran is clearly not God of the Holy Bible. The true God, the living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Glory to his name. And we showed you also that Muhammad cannot be called prophet while at the same time contradicting the earlier true prophets. Now, today we're going to put Muhammad again on the test and on this live broadcast we will have the opportunity to have a nice teaching together and like I said we will put Muhammad to the test yet again and see if this so-called prophet of Islam is a fake prophet or not again right last but not least when I finish my teaching we will have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat either about Islam or the mentioned topic of today. So, in other words, you can ask me questions about today's teaching and I will try to answer your questions as far as I can. And when I also finish my teaching, we will allow Muslims to call us live on Skype. My Skype is the Rob Christian. They can call in uh, to try to refute me or they can try to have a respectful discussion with me and you know me we are always here to have a nice discussion with the Muslims before we actually start guys please let me know if you can hear the sound loud and clear please give me in the, in the live chat a one if you think that my sound is loud and clear so we can continue thank you thank you it's showtime guys and before we start i want to pray with you so god can guide us through today's teaching please pray with me in the name of jesus christ glory to his name lord thank you for your greatness Thank you that when I'm weak, you are strong. Lord, the devil is scheming, and I know he desires to keep us from spending time with you, Lord. Lord, thank you for your grace, and because of the ultimate sacrifice of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, we are saved. Please, Lord, guide us so we can also forgive others who curse us or maybe persecute us because we are followers of your holy son jesus christ glory to his name lord please give me the strength today and when i'm weak and in need of your comfort please give me the courage and wisdom always to overcome lies and deceptions help me not to lean on my own understanding lord but in everything acknowledge you 
so that you can direct my words, thoughts, and actions. Lord, give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement, deceptions, and doubt. Please, Lord, help us honor you in all our ways. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Thank you, thank you for joining in, guys. Amen. Amen to this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless everyone who just joined in. Also, I want to ask God to bless the Muslims so they will think in a very sincere way and take off the Muslim glasses and try to at least to understand and listen to our today's teaching. Today we're going to prove again that Muhammad is a fake prophet. So if you really, as a Muslim, are sincere and looking for the truth, because only the truth will set you free, you will, at the end of this teaching, have to consider if you are following the right deen, as Muslims call it, the right religion, which is Islam. Either you're going to decide that to stay in Islam or accept that Muhammad was nothing but a liar, that he created Islam to attack the divinity of Jesus Christ. Glory to his name. Now, as we mentioned yesterday, Muslims love to go to Deuteronomy 18.18 18 to show you that Deuteronomy 18.18 18 is talking about a prophet to come and they love to tell you and force the name of Muhammad as you see in front of you in this verse they love to force the name of Muhammad which is not, certainly not there inside this verse please read with me guys this is from the King James Version Deuteronomy 18 all the way to verse 20 I will raise them a prophet, here God is talking, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Now Muslims, is Muhammad as a Muslim, is he a brother of the Israelite? Is he actually an Israelite? Because it clearly it says among their brethren. And as we know, Muslims love to compare Muhammad with Moses. But is Muhammad actually a fellow Israelite. Certainly he is not, because here the prophet that is being mentioned here is from the Israelites. He is from among their brethren. Like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Now, Muslims, is God of the Holy Bible? That you see here in front of you. Is it the same God of Islam, of Muhammad? And certainly not. How can you try to have a cake and eat it too? You know very well that Jews and Christians don't follow the same God of Islam. The Christians and the Jews don't follow Allah. We don't worship Allah. And we certainly reject Muhammad. So how... Are you trying to tell us that you are talking about Jehovah, which you certainly do not worship? Please show me, to any Muslim who is listening, please show me the name Jehovah in your scriptures, in your Islamic scriptures. If you can show me the name Jehovah, I will convert today to Islam. This is my challenge to you. Is there any Muslim? Hopefully, if you are really caring about the truth, you will stay put and wait till we finish this teaching so you can call me and refute me and prove to me that I'm wrong. So they love to stop here when they read this verse, guys, from Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. They love to stop here. But we know you need to read the entire chapter to understand the context. So if we read, continue reading, guys. And it shall come to pass that whoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, in the name of who? Jehovah. 
I will require it of him. But the prophet, now here comes the most important part, guys, to nail the coffin, sorry, nail the nail on the coffin of Muhammad. Here, if we continue reading, but the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So according to this verse, guys, Muhammad mentioned a different God who is Allah. He told the Muslims to bow down to, to the Kaaba, especially to the idols, which are the black stones. Right? And Muhammad, when he gave the satanic verses to the pagan Quraysh of Mecca, he bowed down to Allah al Uzza wal Manat. These are the high flying cranes or the mighty cranes. Their intercession is hoped for. This is the satanic versus incident that Muhammad gave to the pagans of Mecca and he bowed down and did sujood, which is prostration. He prostrated and worshipped Allah al Uzza wal Manat, which were the three bird idols, the daughters of the supreme moon idol called Allah. Because remember, guys, pay attention. Allah already existed and was the supreme moon idol of the pagans in Mecca before Muhammad created Islam. So Muhammad basically adopted the same moon idol inside Islam when he created Islam. Right? So here, according to Deuteronomy 18.20, if Muhammad actually would have lived in the time of Moses, Moses would have ordered his men to stone Muhammad to death because that was the punishment for committing blasphemy. So Muslims, why do you love to talk about Moses and show us that Muhammad is a prophet like Moses, comparing Muhammad to Moses, while that same Moses would have spent your prophet and would have ordered his men to stone your fake prophet to death. You want to have a cake and eat it too, Muslims? Be my guest. God bless everyone who just joined in. Thank you, Marcel Wabing, and everyone who just joined in. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Guys, we don't do this for ourselves. We do this for the truth, and only the truth will set us free. And who is the truth? Who is Al-Haq? As the Muslims love to call it. Is Jesus Christ. He claimed to be Al-Haq, which is by the way then one of the 99 names of Allah, the truth. So here Jesus claimed divinity, Muslims. It's one of the 99 names of your fake moon idol, Allah. So let us continue guys. According to John 19 verses 28 all the way to 13 from the King James Version. We know, we know that when Jesus was on the cross, guys, thank you, Carrie, and God bless you, sister. We know that when Jesus was on the cross, when he said, it's finished, those couple words, it is finished, we didn't need any prophet after Jesus anymore. Yes, you heard it correctly. We didn't need any prophet to come after Jesus because Jesus finished everything. When he said it's finished, he completed his ministry. He completed his mission. When it was the will of the Father for the Son to come in the flesh as the eternal word to be the ultimate sacrifice and so we can be saved because he came to take the sins of mankind on his own shoulders so we can be saved right 
all the way to eternity and be with God and be connected with God again. We didn't need any new prophet to come and reject and contradict the teaching of Jesus Christ and the Holy Bible. And the proof is in front of you. Read with me, guys. From John 19, verses 28 to 30. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished. So as you see, everything is accomplished now. Because Jesus fulfilled his mission. That the scripture might be fulfilled. Did you catch it? So the laws, the old laws were fulfilled. The scripture is fulfilled. The prophecies has been fulfilled. Said, I thirst. So when he knew he was finished, he completed his task. He said, I thirst when he was on the cross. Now there was a set of a vessel full of vinegar. And they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon. I stop, sorry guys, if I'm butchering the English word. English is not my first language. And put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. Did you catch it, guys? So from that very moment, when he said it is finished, we didn't need any new prophets to come and contradict the Holy Bible and the teaching of Jesus Christ. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. As you see here, Jesus at that moment died on the cross and he fulfilled the prophecies about him from the Old Testament. Yet we see Muhammad coming 600 years later saying that, <laughs> that Jesus wasn't crucified and he wasn't killed. So he rejects this historical event. Right? Even Bart Ehrman that lo Muslims love to go to. Guys remember Bart Ehrman? Who is an historian? Who is one of the biggest enemies of Christ? Of Christianity? Even he even Bart Ehrman does not disagree. He does not disagree with the historical event that Jesus died on the cross. But Muhammad, who did not know Jew Jesus, who never talked to Jesus, who came 600 years after Jesus, he came and contradicted the death of Christ on the cross. So even Bart Ehrman does not contradict that. He actually agrees to, with the crucifixion and the death of Jesus Christ because all the historical evidence are there. Yet Muhammad and the Muslims have no clue about the historical events. So they want to have a cake and eat it too. And if we go to uh, the book of Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 14 from the King James Version we can read the following. Then the Lord sent unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name, in the name of God. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them. So as you see, Jehovah, the God of the Holy Bible, did not command Muhammad or he did not spoke to him. And that's true. Even if you go to Islam, guys, even if you go to the most trusted Islamic sources, Muhammad did not speak to Allah. Right? So, Muhammad simply adopted a fake moon idol, which was already worshipped by the pagans of Mecca, and he adopted it. He copied that moon idol and he adopted it inside Islam when he created Islam. And as you see, the proof is in front of you. Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet who came and mentioned a totally different God. Neither speck unto him. So, God, the living holy God of the Old Testament, the God of the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did not speak to Muhammad. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. And if we go to Matthew 7, verse 15 from the King James Version, we can read, Beware of false prophets. Here Jesus is telling us to beware of fake false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. 
So we knew, we know the fruit of, of, of Islam. We know the fruit of Muhammad, right? We know how Muhammad contradicted the teaching of Jesus. Jesus says, love your enemies. Muhammad killed his enemies. Jesus says, forgive those who persecute you or curse you. Muhammad actually cursed his enemies every morning. Every morning when Muhammad woke up in his morning Fajr prayer, he actually cursed his enemies. He cursed such and such. And we will show it to you later from the hadith. So is Muhammad, guys, any Muslim who is still actually, does he still believe that Muhammad is a true prophet? After all that we have showed you? If you are truly sincere, stop calling Allah the same God of the Old Testament. Stop calling Muhammad a true prophet among the true prophets of the Holy Bible. Because he certainly is not. And if we go to Matthew 24, verse 24, it says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So, Muhammad has deceived as a false prophet he has deceived unfortunately till today more than 1 billion poor victims that we call Muslims this is why I always say guys please don't curse our Muslim guests don't, don't mock them because they are the ones who are deceived they are the ones who are in this dark satanic cult called Islam we need to help them we need to show them the truth. So when I debate Muslims, guys, I don't do this to win debates. I kid you not. I don't do that. I am doing that. I'm exposing their fake prophet to show them the truth. So they can leave this dark satanic cult called Islam and come back to home to Jesus. Muslims, please come back home. Because there's a big chance that your grand, 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 grandfather's or Christians or Jews, right? But unfortunately, your grandfathers were, sorry to say, they were cowards and they didn't want to die like Stephen, the first martyr in Christianity. They didn't want to die in the name of Christ. I love to be killed instead of becoming a Muslim. Please kill me and I will never accept this fake God called Allah and this fake prophet of Islam called Muhammad. I love to die for the truth. Right? So a big chance, especially uh, Muslims who live uh, in countries like Iraq or Syria or Israel or Palestine, basically the countries all surrounded by uh, surrounding the Mediterranean Sea. Mediterranean Sea, right? And we know Muslims reached all the way to Vienna, all the way to Spain, and they almost conquered Spain. But thank to the Lord, they were driven back, right? Else, a lot of countries in Europe would have been under the rule of Islam. In the Spanish Inquisition. I think it's called Inquisition, right? Sorry if I'm butchering the English, guys. If we continue, guys, as I mentioned earlier, this is from Sahih al Bukhari. Sahih, Sahih Hadith. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. With a little echo, guys. Sahih, Sahih. Yeah, Reconquista, yeah, it's, that's the one I was looking for. That's the right word to look for. The Spanish Reconquista. When they Re reconquered basically their own land from the Muslims who came and took the land from the Christians. So this is from Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 82 and from the Arabic reference, hadith number 4,055.9. So read with me. Narrated Salim's father, 
that he heard Allah's messenger Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, on raising his head from the bowing in the last rak'ah in the Fajr. Guys, Fajr is the morning prayer, right? In the morning prayer, the Fajr saying, when Muhammad woke up every morning and he started to pray, O oh Allah, look what he's asking from his fake moon idol. O oh Allah, curse, please curse such and such person and such such person. Guys, is this a true prophet? Would a true prophet curse people? Last time I checked, Jesus said, Blessed are the ones who are getting cursed. Right? Forgive people who curse you. Forgive people who persecute you. But Muhammad loved to invoke his fake God and asked him to curse people. And we know when Muslims pray, every day they pray, they love to curse Jews and Christians in Al-Fatiha. They curse us at least 15 to 17 times a day when they repeat the curses of Allah upon us, upon the Jews and the Christians. So they actually repeat the curses of Allah in their daily prayers. And Al-Fatiha, which is chapter 1, is the most often repeated chapter of the Quran. So they love to curse the Jews and the Christians. So, and the proof is in front of you that a true prophet would never ever invoke his God and ask Allah, or in this case his God, to curse such and 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 such people. Muslims, do you really want to follow this fake prophet who loved to curse his enemies or do you want to come back home and accept the real peaceful and loving teaching of Jesus Christ who said forgive those who persecute you and curse you love your enemies what is a better teaching than that can someone show me a better teaching than of Christ good luck with that good luck so if we continue guys we are going to show you even from Muhammad's mouth, from the hadith, from Sahih Muslim, Sahih, Sahih. From Sahih Muslim, hadith number 2898, that Muhammad even gave a fake prophecy. A fake prophecy. And the proof is in front of you. Read with me. Mustawad al Quraysh reported I heard Allah's Messenger Muhammad as saying, The last hour will come when the Romans would be, be form. A majority amongst people. Wait a second. That means that the last hour, the last hour, the final days would come when the Romans would be the biggest number among the people in the world. But the Romans are actually not here anymore, right? I went to Roma before, guys. I went to the Vatican. I went to see Rome. And I met a couple of Romans. But it, are those the Romans that Muhammad is, are talking about? <laughs> they are maybe a couple thousand of people, man. Let's say maybe one, one million. Because Rome is a really big city. Maybe more than one million. But that does not mean that... This is a true prophecy. This is actually a fake prophecy that Muhammad took from thin air. He invented this so-called prophecy. And the proof is in front of you. So the Romans are defeated a long time ago and still the last hour did not come. And according to Muhammad, if the Romans are the biggest force to be reckoned with, the last hour will come. So this is nothing but a lie. Muslims, the proof is in front of you. Why are you following? Why are you accepting Muhammad to be a true prophet? Because here, we just showed you that this is a fake prophecy. Can a true prophet give a false prophecy? Certainly the answer would be no. Muslims leave this satanic cult. Denounce Muhammad, denounce Islam, and come back to Jesus. 
because the proof is in front of you that Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. Right? Ultimate truth. Ultimate truth. Why did your fake prophet give a false prophecy here? Eh? The Romans do not exist anymore. And they were at that time the largest force to be reckoned with. And the last hour did not come. And I hope you recovered from yesterday's spanking, my friend. So if you have the courage still, please call me when I'm finished with my teaching. So we can have a nice discussion again, if you think you can take me on. And I hope you will stay with today's topic and not change the topic. If you continue, guys, if we go to chapter Surat Ali Amran, which is chapter 3, Ayah 65, we can read the following. O people of the scripture, why do you argue? So here, Allah is talking to us. Who? To the Jews and the Christians. We are the people of the scripture, remember? Right? Ya Ahlul Kitab, right? We are called Ahlul Kitab. The Jews and the Christians. Why do you argue about Abraham while the Torah and the Gospel were not, were not revealed until after him. Now pay attention guys to this part. Here according to Allah, the Torah and the Gospel are revealed after Abraham. Guys, pay attention. Now we're going to show you the contradiction. From chapter 3, Ayah 84, from the same chapter guys, we're going to show you that Muhammad contradicted himself because we know Muhammad is the one who is fabricating ayahs, right? Say, we have believed in Allah and what was revealed to us, Ayah 84, to us and what was revealed to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac and Jacob. Wait a second. Guys, what did the last ayah say? The Torah and the Gospel were revealed after Abraham, after him. What does this ayah from the same chapter say? Couple, only a couple of ayahs later, right? It says, it was revealed to Abraham. Did you catch it? The scripture was revealed to Abraham. Boom! Here we just found a nice contradiction. So Muhammad, did Allah receive, of our revealed the scripture? To Abraham or not? To Abraham or not? Huh? I think Allah changes mind. But we know it's Muhammad who was saying stuff. But a couple days later, he was saying something else. This is a true sign of a fake prophet. Fabricating Quran, fabricating ayahs of the Quran, and the proof is in front of you, right? Here it says the scripture, which are the Torah and the gospel, are revealed after Abraham, and here it says it is revealed to Abraham, was revealed to him. What is that was revealed to Abraham? The Torah? And since when is scripture revealed to Ishmael, which is another lie? What is the, the scripture that was revealed to Ishmael, guys? Any Muslim who wants to show me the scripture that is revealed to Ishmael? Please show me that scripture. I want to read it. Show me the scripture that is revealed to Ishmael. Show me the scripture that was revealed to Abraham. Because here it says it was not revealed to Abraham after him. And here it says it is revealed to Abraham. You lying fake prophet of Islam. Contradicting, spanking yourself. Exposing yourself. So if there are proud Muslims who think they can defend this contradiction, please call me when I'm done teaching. My Skype ID is the Arab Christian without separation. The Arab Christian. Please call me when I'm finished. I will open up my Skype so you can call me. And here from chapter 4, the next chapter, Ayah 54 from Surah An-Nisa, or do they envy people of what Allah has given to them of his bounty? 
but we had already given the family of Abraham the scripture and wisdom. You see here, Abraham was giving the scripture. Well, here it says it, the scripture was revealed after Abraham. After who? After Abraham. After him. But from a second ayah, from the next chapter, guys, here it says Abraham and his family were given the scripture. So here it says after him, here it says given to Ab Abraham, and here it says it was given to the family of Abraham. So which one is it, guys? Is it given to Abraham? Is it given? Is, well, is it not given? Sorry, is it not given to Abraham? Is it given to Abraham or is it given only to the family of Abraham? Which one is it? Muhammad, you cannot have a cake and eat it too. Contradiction upon contradiction. And here, this is from Surah Al Hajj. Chapter 22, Ayah 52, we can read the following. And we did not send before you any messenger or prophet, except that when he spoke, Satan threw into it some misunderstanding. So Satan had control over the prophets of Allah. But Allah abolishes or cancels that which Satan throws in. Then Allah makes precise his verses. How is this a God who allows Satan to throw in satanic verses, the verses of Satan, Satan being allowed to throw in his own verses inside the Quran. I thought that Allah was Allahu Akbar. Allah is bigger. Allah is bigger. Allahu Akbar. How is Allah bigger? while he's allowing Satan to play with his so-called uncreated, uncorrupted Quran, right? And if we go to the tafsir, if we go to the tafsir of the same ayah, chapter 22, ayah 52, we can read the following. Please read me, guys. This is from Azbab al-Nuzul. The reason the tafsir by al-Wahidi, Azbab al-Nuzul, of the coming of the ayah that was revealed to Muhammad. By Al-Wahidi, it says, the commentators of the Quran said, when the messenger of Allah saw that his people were shunning him, he was aggrieved by their rejection. So they, he was aggrieved that they rejected him of the mess, his message. So he brought them and he secretly wished that Allah, exalted is he, reveal something to him which would bring him and his people closer to each other. In as he was to see them accept faith, to accept Islam. So Muhammad wanted to the people to accept Islam. One day he sat one in one of the congregations of the Qurayshi pagans which attracted a huge number of its members and he wished that Allah exalted is he does not reveal him on that day anything that might repel them from him. Allah exalted is he revealed to him then Surah an najm which is chapter 22. Sorry uh, chapter 50, uh, 53 sorry chapter 53 by the star when it's Stated, Surah chapter 53, the Messenger of Allah, Allah bless him and give him peace, recited it, but when he reached, now here comes the important part, guys. Have you thought upon Allah and Al Uzza and Manad, the third and the other? The devil, the devil, so, don't, so you don't going to say, hey, uh, the verse that you read, the ayah that you read from this ayah, is your own understanding, Rob Christian. No, no, this is. The, the proof is in front of you. This is not my tafsir. This is the tafsir of Al-Wahidi in his Azbab al nazul Not the tafsir of Rab Christian. Saying the following. The devil, pay attention, the devil put on his tongue, on the tongue of who? Of Muhammad, what he had secretly wished and hoped for and said. These are the mighty grains, the mighty bird idols, the mighty daughters of Allah, the moon idol Allah. And their intercession is hoped for. That's what the Arabic says. Right? These are the mighty cranes, the mighty daughters of Allah, and their intercession is hopeful. Why? Because the pagan Quraysh guys of Mecca, 
when they prayed, they believed that the three daughters of Allah, the moon idol, the supreme moon idol, those three bird idols, they used to have wings and they carried the prayers of the pagan of Quraysh, the pagan Quraysh of Mecca, they carried the prayers all the way to Allah, the supreme moon idol. So they believed that these three bird idols, Allah al Uzza wal Manat, they intercede for them to the supreme moon idol, which was Allah. When the Quraysh, now read with me, guys. When the Quraysh, the pagan Quraysh, heard this, they were very pleased. So, of course, they are going to be very happy with what Muhammad was saying about their pagan idols, about Allah al Uzza wal Manat. Their intercession is hoped for. So here, Muhammad was given the satanic verses by Satan himself, and he delivered the satanic verses to the Quraysh. And what happened next? When the Quraysh happened, uh, heard this, they were very pleased. The Messenger of Allah carried on reciting until the end of the surah, and then did sujood. What is sujood? It means worshipping. It's an act of worship. It's prostration. So Muhammad prostrated, worshipped and bowed down and to the pagan three idols. Allah al uzza wal manad, the third. All the Muslims followed Muhammad, sued and prostrated, did sujood. They all did shirk, worshipping three idols of the pagans and all the pagans, all the idolaters who were present prostrated too, to who? the three bird idols and they were happy about what Muhammad was saying about their pagan idols. You see, everyone who was there except two people who were too old could not bow down because of their old age and their disability, they could not prostrate. But they took a handful of dust and put it on their foreheads instead. The Quraysh pagans then dispersed, happy with what they heard from Muhammad. They said, Muhammad has mentioned, guys listen, Muhammad has mentioned our idols with complementary terms. Allah Akbar, Muhammad just said that our idols are really very beautiful. Their intercession is hoped for. Right. Did you catch it guys? So here Muhammad committed shirk and he bowed down and prostrated to the bird idols, the three bird idols of the Quraysh pagans of Mecca. So last time I checked, shirk is the unforgivable sin in Islam. Is this a true prophet? Shouldn't Allah not have protected his so-called self-proclaimed prophet of Islam, Muhammad? Why didn't Allah protect his final prophet, the greatest prophet of all times, the seal of the prophets, why didn't he protect him from the devil? Huh? You call this a prophet who committed shirk? I mean, you call him the best example. How did Muhammad no, was not protected by his moon idol Allah by committing shirk. Prostrating, bowing down, prostrating to the bird idols. And what happened then? Then that evening, Jibreel, peace be upon him, went to the messenger of Allah and said, so Jibreel came and to spank Muhammad, look what happened. What have you done, Muhammad? Jibreel is saying, what have you done? Oh no, oh my Allah. Jibreel is saying, oh my Allah, oh my Allah, what have you done? You recited to the people that which I did not bring from Allah, is Jibreel saying. So those ayahs that were given to the pagans from Muhammad's mouth, Muhammad delivering the satanic verses. It's a true historical evidence, a true historical event that happened in the time of Muhammad in the lifetime of Muhammad, in Mecca, when he was still in Mecca, right? So Jibreel spanked him and said, oh, oh, what have you done? You gave something else that was not from Allah. You gave something to the pagans 
the satanic verses from Satan himself, from the devil, right? And you said what I did not say to you. So Jibreel was correcting Muhammad here. Did you catch it, guys? The proof is in front of you. So Jibreel spanked Muhammad. Spank, spank Muhammad. What have you done? That's what you gave to the Qurayshi pagans. That was not from me. That was not from Allah. You said what I did not say to you. You said the words of the devil, of Satan himself. هَذِي الْغَرَانِيقَ الْعُلَى إِنَّ شَفَاعَتَهُنَّ لَتُرْتَجَى These are the mighty rains, the غَرَانِيق, and their intercession is hoped for. So this part, guys, is basically the satanic verses that you see highlighted for you. Maybe the admins uh, can give the link. Let me give it also in the live chat. So guys, please bookmark this link. This is the tafsir that you can use in your discussions with Muslims. Bookmark it, use it for your knowledge, study, and your discussions with Muslims. So Muslims, as you see, your prophet was nothing but a mushrik, and you dare to call us mushriks? You, call, you dare to call us Jews and Christians mushriks? Ones who are doing shirk? But your own prophet committed shirk. How dare you? How dare you Muslims to call us mushrikun? While your own prophet committed shirk, bowed down and prostrated to the three bird idols, which are Allah, al Uzza, wal Manad, the three daughters of Allah, the pagan moon idol Allah that your fake prophet adopted with him from the pre-Islamic era and adopted that same moon idol inside Islam. So Allah already existed as you see guys. Right? Muslims, take it, swallow it, the proof is in front of you. You cannot deny it. The proof is in front of you. Either you're going to stay in Islam and accept the fact that your fake prophet got the satanic verses from the devil and he delivered them to the pagans who were very happy with Muhammad when they heard. And they were very pleased with Muhammad saying very complimentary stuff about their idols. Muhammad has mentioned our idols with complimentary terms. They were very pleased when Muhammad gave them the satanic verses. The proof is in front of you. Eat it. Don't forget to digest it and swallow it. Stay in Islam if you don't care about the truth. Or leave and denounce Islam and Muhammad. Denounce him and accept that he's nothing but a fake prophet. Leave the satanic cult and come back home. Please come back home. Come back to Jesus Christ who is your Lord and Savior. Clearly Muhammad created Islam to attack the Holy Bible, to attack the divinity of Jesus Christ. Glory to his name. Please come back home if you care about the truth and the truth is in front of you and only the truth will set you free. Accept it. Don't forget to digest it and swallow it. If we go to chapter 15, if we go to chapter 15, ayah 42, it says, Indeed, my servants, no authority will you have over them, except those who follow you of the deviers. Wait a second. Muslims. 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 Uh-oh. 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 Here Allah is saying that Satan has no authority over his servants. Muslims call Muhammad the servant of Allah, the prophet of Allah. And here Allah is promising that Satan has no authority over Muhammad. But clearly, as we showed you, Muhammad was controlled by the devil, giving him the satanic verses, delivering the satanic verses to the pagans of Mecca. And not only that, he bowed down and prostrated, did sujood to the three bird idols, Allah, Al-Uzza, wal Manat. هذه الغرانيق العلا إن شفعتهن لا ترتجى. 
right? So here, Allah forgot to keep his promise. So Allah is the one who is allowing Satan to take control over his servant Muhammad. So Allah his, gave an empty promise. The empty promises of Allah. So clearly Allah is nothing but a dead idol, a dead moon idol, and the proof is in front of you. Why didn't he kept his promise? Muslims, why did your fake moon idol, who is called Allah, why didn't he kept his promise and protected your fake prophet from doing shirk? You cannot have a cake and eat it to Muslims. How did Allah give his pro promise to keep Muhammad safe from the devil, but at the same time allowing Muhammad, sorry, allowing the devil to take control over the Prophet of Islam. It's not only that, Muslims. If we go to the hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, Sahih, Echo, guys, a little echo, you know, to make it more exciting. Sahih, 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 Sahih. Anyway, Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 5765. Thank you for the donations, Kerry, and God bless you. God bless everyone who is donating. God bless everyone who is supporting our work. Guys, and as you see, we don't do this for ourselves, right? We do this for the truth, and only the truth will set us free. Thank you for your support again and your donations. I appreciate it. God bless. So, from the hadith, black magic, the magic of Satan, we know that the master of black magic, according to Islam, is Satan himself. Again, for the second time, black magic of Satan was worked on the poor prophet of Islam. Oh no, Allah again, forgetting to keep his promise. To not allow Satan to have authority over Muhammad, his servant. Oh no, Allah, what have you done? Again, an empty promise from Allah. Allah's empty promises. Allah cannot keep his promise again. Allowing the devil, allowing Satan, his black magic, to be worked on Muhammad. So that he used to think, so Muhammad used to think that he had sexual relation, that he had sexual activities with his wives while he actually had not. This is from the mouth of Aisha, the mother of the Mu'mineen, right? The mother of the believers, Aisha, the baby bird, uh, sorry, the baby. Oh, Lord of mercy, guys. It's so disgusting. It's so disgusting to think about that she was a baby bride of Muhammad. Anyway, so she was the baby bride, the mother of the believers of Muhammad, who said that the black magic was worked on Muhammad. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Muslims, especially the majority of Sunni Islam, Sunni Muslims cannot reject it because this is from Sahih, 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 Sahih al-Bukhari. Right? So here again, Satan taking control what is black magic spell on Muhammad, on the Prophet of Islam, for the second time, Allah allowing the devil to take control of Muhammad, not keeping his promise, as we showed you from the Quran, and Muhammad used to walk like a Majnoon, right? People call him actually Majnoon, which means a crazy, a madman. Majnoon means, guys, Majnoon means Someone who is possessed by jinn. Right? Someone who is possessed by jinn. This is why Muhammad was called Majnoon. He was accused, even in the Quran, to be a Majnoon. A madman. A crazy person. Right? Someone who is possessed by jinn. And we know that the devil is the master of black magic. Right? This is why he is possessed by jinn. This is why they called him a Majnoon. Right? So again, I can read the whole entire hadith, but I think you already understand that Muhammad walked for, like some sources say, 
six months, some other shirts say even for one long year, for one long year or at least six months, Muhammad walked like a crazy person. He was possessed by the black magic of Satan, thinking that he had sexual int relations, sexual intercourse with his wives, while that was not true. Right? While he actually had not. Then one day he said, Oh, Aisha, two men came to me, and one of them sat near my head, you know. The one near my head thought, What's wrong with Muhammad? What's wrong with this man? The latter replied, This is on he. Muhammad is under the effect of magic. Who has and this guy is asking, who has worked magic on him? The other replied, Labid bin Al Asim. So a guy called Labid al Asim, a man from Bani Zuraiq, was an ally of the Jews. He was the ally of the Jews, and he was a munafiq, a hypocrite. So he is the one, a guy who used to be friends and ally with the Jews, he is the one who worked the black magic on Muhammad. Why is Allah allowing the black magic of Satan to be worked on Muhammad? I mean, he's the final prophet. He is the beloved prophet of Allah. The seal of all the prophets. Why is Allah allowing Satan to play with the mind of Muhammad? Walking like a majnun, walking like a madman in Medina, all right? In Medina, because a ally of the Jews took a comb of the, of Muhammad, and he, where a hair was stuck to it, and on that hair of Muhammad, black magic was worked, and Muhammad became a madman, possessed by jinn, majnun. Right? Lord of mercy, and they call him a prophet, guys. Allah allowing his final prophet, the greatest so-called greatest prophet of all the prophets to be walking around like a majnun possessed by jinn like a madman for at least six months in mecca in medina so from surah al-ahzab chapter 33 ayah 40 guys i will talk about this surah in one of my future live shows and i'm going to show you that Surah Al-Ahzab used to be big as chapter Al-Baqarah, chapter 2. Surah Al-Baqarah, it used to be as big as Surah Al-Baqarah because remember, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, is the biggest surah, the biggest chapter of the Quran, right? Al-Baqarah is the biggest chapter. But Surah Al-Ahzab used to be as big as the chapter of the cow, Surah Al-Baqarah, but many ver verses, many ayahs inside Surah Al-Ahzab are lost. Allah allowing His Quran, His Quranic ayahs to be lost. But that's a topic for later. So we will talk about the corruption of the Quran in the future live show. And we will show you that Surah Al-Ahzab, many ayahs from Surah Al-Ahzab are lost in history. So how do Muslims dare to say that the Quran of Allah is uncorrupted, not changed. Anyway, that was off topic. So if we read, Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but the messenger of Allah and last of the prophets, and ever is Allah of all knowing. So how, how is Muhammad the last of the prophets, while Allah is allowing the devil to play with the mind of Muhammad, not once, but at least twice, play with his mind, controlling Muhammad, the devil controlling the mind of Muhammad, giving the satanic verses, as we mentioned earlier, to the pagans, and the black magic spell of Satan, controlling Muhammad for at least six months. How, 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 you, how do you accept these guys? How do you accept Muhammad to be the last prophet, to be, God forbid, to be in the line of the true prophets like Abraham and Jacob and Moses? God forbid, which is a line. How do you accept him as a prophet? While all the prophets were never in this situation. Abraham was not 
giving any satanic verses. Abraham was not under the control of Satan. Moses was not under the control of Satan. Moses didn't deliver satanic verses to Satan. Sorry, to the pagans or to his fellow men. Moses did not prostrate to any idol like Muhammad, like we showed you, right? Muhammad prostrated together with the pagans to Allah al Uzza wal Manad, right? So, how do you accept the fact that Muhammad was under the control of the, of the devil, but dare to call him a prophet of Abraham, Isaac, of Jacob, the holy living God of the Old Testament and the New Testament? If we go to chapter 11, 71, we can read, And his wife was standing, and she smiled, then we gave her good tidings of Isaac after Isaac Jacob. Now guys, guys who are in the live chat, do you see a problem with this ayah guys? Do you, do you notice an, a problem with this ayah? I hope you noticed something. Here is a major problem. Maybe someone can tell me in the text what the problem is that we that I am thinking about maybe you can help me out guys what do you think is the problem with this ayah anyone anyone who knows the problem with this ayah hmm no one can help me out here? Come on, guys. What is the problem with this ayah? Well, you're close, Dam Incur. You're very close. You're very close. Yes, Indigator Veritas. You helped the checkpot, my friend. It says of Isaac and after Isaac Jacob where is the name of Ish Ishmael because Muslims love to say without any proof of course without ev any evidence they say that Muhammad comes from the line of Ishmael but here clearly it says Isaac and after Isaac Jacob why is Ishmael not mentioned uh oh uh oh I think he Allah forget about Ishmael he forgot actually to mention Ishmael right and what about this verse what about this ayah from Surah Al-Ankabut the spider chapter 29 you know I don't understand why you would call one of the chapters of the Quran a spider but anyway chapter 29 27 it says and we gave to him Isaac and Jacob and placed in his descendants prophethood and scripture what? Again, what? Where's the smell? Uh oh. I think Allah again, but we know it's Muhammad busting himself. He's the one who is fabricating ayahs. I think Muhammad and Allah forgot again to mention Ishmael. It says, and we gave to him Isaac and Jacob and placed in his descendants prophethood and scripture. So clearly, According to this ayah, Ishmael is not in the line, he's not in the line or the descendants of the prophethood of scripture. Did you catch it, guys? So here, Muhammad is taking the covenant that was given to Abraham in the Old Testament. The covenant, what did God said to Abraham? The covenant will be with Isaac and only with Isaac and his descendants, not with Ishmael, because remember, Ishmael and Hagar were sent to Egypt and the prophethood continued with Isaac and the descendants of Isaac, people like Jacob, right, who was later called Israel, right. So here according to the ayah we just busted 
the claim that Ishmael is from the true prophets or in this case the bloodline of the prophethood so here Muhammad is copy pasting the covenant that was given to Abraham that his son Isaac from his bloodline will the true prophets come right and not from Ishmael and here Muhammad busting himself when you are nothing but a fake prophet being a nothing but a bad copy paste machine broken copy paste machine busting yourself when you are a prophet guys and the proof is in front of you when you are a fake prophet like Muhammad you're going to make a mistake and this is one of the mistakes why did Muhammad forgot to mention Ishmael this is madness this is stupidity from the fake prophet of Islam and by this guys I want to thank you for listening to the teaching maybe if we have any Muslim with us maybe you want to call me maybe people want to ask me questions in the live chat please do so so we can start the live Q&A session if you have any questions sorry guys if I missed any questions during the teaching and I like I always say please keep your questions if you have a question for me keep it after the teaching is there any Muslim maybe who wants to call me about today's topics I hope you enjoyed this teaching guys I hope you enjoyed this teaching I hope you made some or took some notes if you liked a small part of the teaching and you want to use it please do so my teaching videos guys my live shows any video that i upload is yours to be to be used so download it cut the part that you like use it on your own youtube channel or social media you don't even need to ask me for permission my videos are your videos right and i want to thank people who are supporting us who are giving us donation through the super chat or through patreon we appreciate it thank you sony Tadam. any any abdul do we have any muslim do we have any muslim who thinks that he has the courage and the knowledge to call me and refute me about today's teaching please do so be my guest is there any imam i mean there are more than one billion muslims in 2019 are you telling me Muslims are afraid to call us and end our careers come on man is there any Imam is there any student of an Imam is there any Ustaz from maybe Indonesia we have we had ultimate truth we, we spanked yesterday yes yesterday when I went live this guy dared to call me and he got spanked pretty hard and we have, I think, a, two keyboard Muslims. You know, I always say, I always love to say that we should create a time travel machine, guys. Beat me up, Scotty. <laughs> we should go to the past and take a couple of keyboards with us, hand them over to Muhammad and to his Sahaba, the companions, right? the bloodthirsty Sahaba who killed any criticizers of Muhammad anyone who dared to criticize Muhammad they slew them they cut off their throats we should give them keyboards because it's much peaceful to use a keyboard to defend Islam than the sword right because today's Muslims in 2019 they become really soft they don't dare to defend their cult they only become keyboard terrorists Keyboard Jihad, that's, that's the new tactic guys, Keyboard Jihads. They don't dare to call us. So what can we do? We are out of Muslims with courage. There are no Muslims left with courage. Karyan is asking a question. Karyan, thank you for your question. She's asking, what is the difference between Shaitan, Iblis and Dajjal and Jinns? Um, Karyan, basically they are from the fame, uh, so, sorry, from the same uh, creatures, basically, right? 
the jinn, Satan is a jinn. In Christianity, according to the Bible, according to the Bible, Satan was an angel, right? He was an angel. And God gave free will to the angels, right? And Satan, who was a very beautiful uh, angel, actually, he was a very beautiful angel. He chose to go against God and deceive Adam and Eve, right? Remember the story in Genesis? But in Islam, in Islam, Satan is actually not a fallen angel, like in our holy book. Satan is a jinn. There is nothing called jinn in Christianity or in the Bible, right? So Muhammad, he must have heard about jinns, maybe from the Persian, maybe from the Zoroastrians, whatever. And he implemented that in Islam. So according to Islam, angels are created from light and jinns, who is Satan, he is the head of the jinns, he is created from smokeless fire. So that's the difference, Karian. All right? So, in Christianity, we have something called demons that are falling angels. But there's nothing, there's no such uh, thing like that in Islam. Islam teaches that Satan is not an angel. Stranger in time, do you think I would stay a split second in Islam? No. Thank to the Lord, I was never a Muslim. I think I would have not respected my own brains, you know. <laughs> Actually, it reminds me of uh, Bart Ehrman again. Guys, remember Bart Ehrman, right? He was asked a question. One, one of the people who was listening to one of his lectures, he asked him, what about Islam? Would you ever think about studying Islam? You know what Bart Ehrman said? Bart Ehrman said, if one day I decide to disrespect my own brains, I will start studying Islam. <laughs> so no, I have too much respect for myself and for my own brains to be deceived by the Satan of Islam, who is Allah and his messenger Muhammad. Right? Uh, Muslims actually do not respect their brains because if they respected their brains and their salvation and the truth, they would have not stayed in Islam. But the problem with Muslims is fear. Fear is a big problem in Islam. Punishment of the grave. The fear of the punishment in the grave. And I made a cartoon about it, guys. If you, if you love to watch that, go and look for my video. It's called Punishment of the Grave. It's a really, I put a really lot of time in that video. So go, please look for it. Maybe one of the admins can give you the link. Uh, Muslims fear something called punishment of the grave. Right? So they are afraid. The fear in Islam is so big that is keeping them, unfortunately, in this satanic cult. They are afraid. They are afraid that if they leave Islam, their families, maybe their friends, maybe their cousins will kill them. It's fear. It's fear that keeps them in Islam. Right? Even the ones... I know a lot of Muslims who know that Islam is fake. They know that Muhammad cannot be a true prophet. They know he's a fake prophet. But because of the fear that Islam comes with, they are still in Islam. The fear. Right? Because if you are a very young kid, Let's say you are 15 or 16 and you found out that Muhammad is a fake prophet and you reject Islam in secret. If your family hears about it, they might kick you. They might even, uh, you know, they kick you out of their, of, of their house. They disown you, right? You will have to live on the street. And if they are really cruel parents, they might decide to kill you. Because they are allowed to kill you if you leave Islam. The penalty for leaving Islam is death, right? So the fear in Islam is the thing that is keeping those poor victims that we call Muslims, poor victims of this satanic cult. That's what 
keeping them in Islam, unfortunately. Fear. Hey, Sophia Brown, welcome. God bless. Dame Incur is asking a question. Do Muslims know the concept called love? Well, Dame Incur, uh, are there any Muslim to show me that Allah knows love? Actually, Muslims say, a lot of Muslims that I talked with for the last 14, let's say 15 years, a lot of them say, we don't need to be loved by Allah. We, only we Muslims should love Allah. Allah doesn't need love. Allah doesn't need to share his love with us. I kid you not. So no, Allah created Muslims to, be worship, to worship him. That's why he created Muslims. He created Muslims to sin. And if you go to the hadith from the mouth of Muhammad, if you do not sin, Allah will remove you from existence. So if you are a very righteous Muslim, even if you are a righteous, good Muslim, and you do not commit sin, you don't like to commit sin, you don't like to steal, you don't like to kill, whatever, Allah will remove you from existence. So Allah loves Muslims to sin. Ultimate truth, no one blocked you, liar. No one blocked you. Don't lie. Okay? Don't lie. No one blocked you. Liar. Shame on you. You truly have no shame, you have no dignity to go solo to say that I blocked you. You truly have no shame, ultimate truth. You liar, you deceiver. But you know, you know, people know better, right? They know that you are a liar. You called me yesterday. Here, you are in my list. Right? Liar. This is you who called me. So why are you lying, man? You're truly, you Muslims truly have no shame that you have to go this low to say that I blocked you. Shame on you, liar. Shame on you. Oh man. Oh man, oh man. Maybe this guy called me during my teaching. That's not my problem. Call me now. Why are you calling me when I say to you, don't call me through my, during my teaching? Why are you not waiting till I finish teaching? Right? Call me now if you have the courage, man. Don't call me when I'm teaching. Line of Islam. Call me, Abdul. Call me, call me. Call me, call me. Call me. If you have the courage and the knowledge, call me. Talk in chat is cheap. Right? Don't be a coward and call me. Show everyone that I lied today. Yeah, go sleep. Go sleep. It's, it's good for you. Go sleep. It's not late in the Middle East, you liar. It's not late. Again. Making excuses. Go. You sleep at uh, 10 o'clock, man? You call that late? 10 o'clock is late? You liar. My cousin. I mean, it's, it's, it's holidays, right? It's, it's basically vacation. We are in the vacation period. Are you going to sleep at 10? Liar. Go, go watch some football. Go watch some soccer. Whatever you call it. Go play uh, video games. It's better for you. Don't forget to tell your imam about me. Let him call me. Or maybe your dad. You know? I think we are out of Muslims, guys. Unfortunately, we are out of Muslims. Liars. You blocked me, Rob Christian. Liar. I never blocked you. I think we are out of Muslims, guys. Well, that makes my job very easy. If we are out of Muslims in 2019, and it's suddenly all the Muslims left Islam, 
they cannot defend their religion. It makes my uh, job very easy. Right. Do we have any question in the text, guys? Do we have any question about today's teaching or is there any Muslim? Maybe we have a Muslim who is who have the courage, who is not afraid to call me. Maybe we are lucky. Yeah. Finally, we are live. We are live for almost more than, I think, more than one hour and a half. And no Muslim wants to call. What a shame. Ah, we have ultimate truth. Okay, okay. Let's see. Hi, Abdul. How are you? The food of it, man. Hi, how are you today, guy, my friend? How are you? How are you doing? Hello? Okay. He, uh, I think uh, he has uh, gin in his mic or something. He dropped the call. Next time, Ultimate Truth, do ablution before you call me. Please, wash behind your ears. Put water in your nose. Maybe the gins will... Yeah, he hung up. Maybe the jinns will come out of your nose, right? Because according to Islam, you have to do ablution. You have to become clean. You are najis, right? Next time, do ablution. Wash your mic microphone, right? Then call me. And stop stealing the Wi-Fi of your neighbors, man. Neighbors internet, yeah. I think uh, Muslims love to steal the internet of their neighbors. Yeah, playing games. Anyway, guys. Yeah, daif internet. Daif, daif, daif. Sahir, sahir, sahir. Daif internet. Oh, he's calling. Let's see. I hope uh, he did evolution. Now. Hello, my friend. Don't hang up. What hey, what's up? What do you what's want? You're the lion again? Yeah, lie. yeah, I always lie, don't you know? Rob Christian lies, <laughs> David just... Wood lies, Christian Prince is lying. Did we you... all lie, right? Did you have me blocked and then and then just now you unblocked me? No, you're lying, you're the same. You Stop lying. You don't, you don't I showed guys. everyone the screen. You're not blocked. Stop lying. Don't use excuses with me. Stop lying. No, I called you right after you said, okay, any Muslim want to call, I called you right there. Well, why, why, then my question is, why are you stealing the Wi-Fi of your neighbors? Clearly, there's something wrong with your microphone or your connection. Don't blame it on Rob Christian, okay? Well, do evolution. Well, Always make sure to do evolution before you call me. Right. Okay? All right. Let's, okay. let's move on. Okay. okay. Let's move why, why, why did you call me? Do you have something to say about today's topic? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, uh, first of all, you quoted uh, you quoted John nineteen. You know uh, how you uh, how you quoting John, and you are making Jesus said what John is saying. When Jesus said, uh, "Finish, I'm finished," or, or "I thirst," that's it. That's all he said. All the rest of the verse, that's not him saying it. You making it look like that's him talking. Don't say that. Don't do that. You know that was John or whoever wrote John talking. And we, and we know that John did not write John, right? You know that, right? Why are you lying? Why are you lying, my friend? Why are you lying? Okay, okay. Wait, Let's wait, 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 wait. You said something. Let me, okay. let me, let me spank you and show everyone that you're nothing but a liar and a deceiver. This is John, John 19. Okay, bring the verse. Okay. The proof is in front of you. Who's talking? Now, guys, Who's talking pay there? attention. Wait, wait, wait. Now, guys, Read it. it's time for some spanking. Guys, take Read notes. Okay, shut up. I will read it. Shut up. Guys, it's time for some spanking. Now, take notes. Here, John 19, verse 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, who said? Jesus said, it's finished. Why are you lying, my friend? Why are you such a liar okay. and a deceiver? I said, I said that's all he said. He said it's no, finished. No, 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 wait. But wait. we were speaking... Oh. After Who is speaking? Jesus is speaking. That, Wait, knowing that all ultimate truth, ultimate truth. If you have any dignity, if you have any honor, if you have any dignity, you have any honor, you should you should bow, 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 spank your own behind, please. Spank your own behind for life. This is recording. Yeah, it is recording. And you are getting spanked. 
If you have any dignity, you have any uh, honor, bow down and spank your behind. Okay. Spank your own ass, please. For lying. Or you just scream. Bend, bend I don't over. have a decent conversation. Bend over. No, no, because you're a liar, so you should spank yourself. Are Jesus you going? Are okay, you going? Hold on. Wait, are you going to open up your cam and spank yourself for lying? Because oh, oh, you said, and everyone was heard you. Wait, wait. Everyone you heard you. Man? Everyone heard you. You said Jesus is not the one talking, and here clearly it says he said who Jesus. He said say? it is finished. Why right? are you lying? Do you have any shame? Do you have any dignity? Liar. Can you listen? Spank, spank yourself. Everyone please. like a coward. No, no, you're a coward. If you have okay, any dignity, no, if you have any dignity, you have any honor, open up the cam and show everyone that you're oh spanking God. yourself. Why are you, you know, why are you, you know, belittling yourself? You know, guys, I don't have time for this coward. Making claims, getting spanked by me, by moi, and he has no honor, he has no shame, he has no dignity to open up the cam, bow Bend over, bend over and spank himself for lying. Clearly it says, he said, who? When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, Jesus said, it is finished. Why are you lying saying? And everyone heard you, you are on tape. When we stop the live show, everyone can go and replay the video. Right? Replay the video, guys, and see when he said, when Ultimate Truth said, Jesus is not the one talking. Why are you lying? Why do you have no shame? Why do you have no dignity for lying? You go solo. You need to go solo. Misquote our scripture like yesterday when you said that word became God. No, the word is God. Liar. Yesterday, guys, this ultimate truth, this ultimate truth said on the mic loud and clear when he called me, he said, the word became God. No, John 1, 1 says the word is God. Why are you misquoting when, whenever you call us? Why are you misquoting our scripture? You liar. Shame on you. Don't call me. Don't call me anymore. I'm done with you for today. You know, maybe I can handle one lie. But yesterday you lied. Today you lied. Eh, you know, enough is enough. Eh? Enough is enough. Don't call me. Uh, you see, guys, how Muslims need to lie. Stop calling me Abdul. It's, it's enough. Don't you learn? Even a donkey will not his, hit his own head against the wall because he knows when he's going to hit his head against the wall, it will cause him pain. But this ultimate truth is much dumber than a donkey. I think, now actually, donkeys are very smart. It's an insult for the donkey to call this guy a donkey. These Muslims don't learn. Every time they call us, they get spanked. Don't you learn, man? Don't you have any shame, any dignity to use disgusting lies and deception? Misquoting our scripture. What's wrong with you Muslims? Do you think we are that stupid? I think we need to send to him a child version of the bible guys i think we have some nice child versions of our holy bible that is very easy to read we should send one to ultimate truth so he can understand the text because it's easy tech it's created for children then he can understand that it is the one Jesus is the one who is speaking. He is on the cross and it says, it is finished. He is the one saying it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost, his spirit. So here Jesus completed his mission. He came to die for us so we can be saved. So we don't need Muhammad to come 600 years later and contradict the teaching of Christ and his mission. Coming to die for us. So we can be saved. From that moment on, we didn't need any prophets anymore. And Jesus actually warned us from fake prophets like Muhammad, like Joseph Smith, right? The Mormons have a prophet too, like Joseph Smith. All of them are nothing but false prophets. Guys, I think uh, we will wrap this up. We'll wrap this up. And I think we gave you enough proof today 
please, if you like today's teaching and you missed maybe the beginning and the middle, please rewatch the video, use the video, download the video, use it for your own benefit for your discussions with Muslims for the truth. And please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and please also click on the notification bell so you will get notifications when we are live and we upload our videos. Thank you for watching guys. It was a blessing to have you on my live show. God bless everyone. Muslims, please denounce Muhammad. Please drop Islam. It's not good for you. Please come back home to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus is Lord and Islam is fake. Muhammad is a fake prophet. Thank you for watching. God